Hi everyone, I have created this short presentation to help you with exercise two of module one. I know that we don't have to go too much in depth into the function yet of the organs within the thoracic and the abdominal pelvic regions. However, since I have created an exercise that goes over the quadrants and which organs belong to which organ systems, then it is important to have some idea of them. So let's get started. First, we will cover the organs within the abdominal pelvic regions. Here on this model, we can see a little of the lower ribs covering the top part of the abdominal cavity as the liver is this big organ located on the right side of our body. And this other big organ is the stomach, which is located on the opposite side, therefore on the left of our body. Behind the stomach, which we can't see on this image, would be the pancreas. Immediately under the liver is the gallbladder. Don't get the gallbladder confused with the urinary bladder, which we can see on the pelvic region right over here, sitting under the uterus which on this frontal view has a similar shape. Therefore, this image is of a female body. In addition, the urinary bladder can also just be called the bladder, but the gallbladder is always called the gallbladder. Continuing from the stomach, we will enter what we call the small intestine. Now, the small intestine is going to be divided into three compartments. The first one is the smallest of them all, which we can barely see it right over here, which is called the duodenum or duodenum. From there, it leads into the jejunum, which will be located in the top half of the abdominal region, so right over here. And the last part of the small intestine is the ileum, which will occupy the bottom half, so all of this. From there, we go into the large intestine, which is represented by several other compartments. First, we have the cecum that leads into the ascending column. For now, you just need to focus on the ascending column. Therefore, the part of the large intestine that is going up, that is ascending. And this will then lead into the transverse column Therefore, the part of the column that runs transverse, which then leads to the descending colon. And if you guess that this is the part that is going to go down or descending, then you are correct. And remember, everything makes sense. So from the descending colon, it forms this curve, which is called the sigmoid colon right over here. And once it starts to go straight, it is called the rectum, running behind the uterus and the bladder. Now, everything that I mentioned on this image, except the urinary bladder and the uterus are part of the digestive system. So the liver, the gallbladder, the stomach, the small intestine, which includes the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum, and lastly, the large intestine, which includes all of the colon compartments ending in the rectum, they're all part of the digestive system. The uterus is going to be part of the reproductive system, while the urinary bladder is part of the urinary system. Well, that's actually an easy one, right? As the name already says it, urinary bladder, urinary system. Anyway, let's go to the next image. On this model, we can see superficial structures on the left side and deeper structures on the right side. Let's start with the structures from the abdominal region that we covered on the previous slide that you should be familiar with already. On neither of these images, we can see the liver, correct? Or for this matter, the gallbladder that sits right under the liver because the liver is located on the right side of the body. And on these models, there is nothing on the right side of the body. Actually, the only structure we see on the right side of the body is this muscle right over here that extends from one side to the other. And this muscle is called the diaphragm. 
The diaphragm is the most important muscle for respiration, and it will separate the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity, therefore keeping the lungs and the heart separate from the digestive system organs. On the left side, on the superficial view, we do see the stomach, and if we remove the stomach and look at the deep view, we are able to see the pancreas sitting longitudinally. Notice how it goes all the way to the lateral wall on the left side where it will end on this big organ, which is called the spleen. Another structure that is easier to see at a deeper view is going to be the duodenum, which will be the structure right over here where the small intestine starts. From here, it leads into the top half, which is the jejunum, then the bottom half, which is the ilium. From the ilium, it will go into the large intestine. The large intestine, as we know, is going to be divided into the cecum, which is going to be this first small compartment right over here, then the ascending colon, transitioning into the transverse colon, and we can only see a little bit of the descending colon on the superficial view. On the deep view, it is possible to see the end of the sigmoid colon, and when it starts to go straight, it becomes the rectum. Since this is a male, this will be the urinary bladder. Therefore, the structures that are part of the digestive system would be the stomach, the small and large intestines together with the rectum, and now we're adding the pancreas as well. In addition, since the pancreas is a gland, it will also be part of the endocrine system. Now, we did talk about the spleen that is going to be located at the end of the pancreas, and the spleen will be part of the lymphatic system as it will be an important organ that will defend the body against infections. We also know already that the urinary bladder is part of the urinary system, right? Not only the urinary bladder is part of the urinary system, but the pair of kidneys that can be seen on this image right over here, even though the left one is a little bit hidden behind the pancreas, since the kidneys are located posteriorly within the abdominal cavity, is also part of the urinary system. And this is why individuals that have kidney stones, they complain of back pain. Now, the right kidney can also be seen on this superficial view right over here. Now, these will be the organs within the abdominal pelvic region. However, there are a couple of muscles that you should know as well. This long, slender muscle is called the psoas major. Notice how it is located more medially compared to the others. We can see two other muscles here that are huge, which are the iliacus, which is this one right over here, and the quadratus lumborum right under the kidney. Now, don't worry much about the names of the muscles and the functions for now, or even all of the structures that we are covering for this matter. For now, I just want you to have an idea of which structures or organs belong to which organ system. The activity will also cover the trapezius, for example, which I'm sure most of you have heard of already, maybe mentioned as your traps, as you're working out. And this one is located behind your neck. You probably have already heard of your biceps brachii and your triceps brachii and both are going to be located on your arm. The biceps brachii is located anteriorly, and the triceps is located posteriorly on your arm, and they can't be seen on these models. And this covers everything on the abdominal pelvic region. With regards to the thoracic region, we have a couple of major organs, which are the one heart situated sort of centrally, and a couple of lungs, one on each side of the heart. They belong to different organ systems. The heart belongs to the cardiovascular system. Notice how the term cardiovascular, which means cardio, stands for heart, 
and vascular stands for vessels. Therefore, the blood vessels will also belong to the cardiovascular system. Here are a few of the major blood vessels either leaving or arriving to the heart. This one over here is the superior vena cava. It's a vein and it is formed by the merging of these two brachiocephalic veins. Therefore, this one on the left side is the left brachiocephalic vein and the one on the right side is the right brachiocephalic vein. And the brachiocephalic veins are going to be formed by the fusion of the subclavian veins and the internal jugular veins. Therefore, we will have them on the left side and on the right side as well. So this is the left subclavian vein and this is the left internal jugular vein. Same thing on the right side. Right subclavian vein and right internal jugular vein. There is one more vein which is colored in red which is the pulmonary vein right over here. With regards to arteries, these are the two main arteries that you need to know, which are the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. Now the pulmonary trunk will then become the pulmonary artery once it enters the lungs. Again, it might be too much information to digest, but just remember that the blood vessels belong to the cardiovascular system together with the heart. Lastly, we have the lungs that belong to the respiratory system, and this is what will bring oxygen into our body and remove the waste gases from our body. Part of the respiratory system are also a collection of cartilages that help to maintain the shape of the airways. These will be your thyroid cartilage, for example, which is this huge cartilage that we can see clearly on this image, and the trachea that runs down almost all the way to your lungs. And we can see a little part of it right over here behind this big gland, which is the thyroid gland. Now the thyroid gland is actually part of the endocrine system since it's a gland. And this should help you complete exercise two of module one.